When I found the listing for the system, I was quite conflicted. On the one hand, I was like, another gaming Optiplex PC scam. But on the other hand, I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So I just had to buy it to see for myself. But before that, it's time for today's video sponsor, Linode. Today's video is sponsored by Linode. 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 Linode is a Linux-based web hosting service, which according to G2, is the easiest infrastructure as service provider to use. Linode offers a wide variety of products, including web hosting, game server hosting. They can handle any computational load you throw at them. Linode also offers Kubernetes solutions using K8s with horizontal cluster auto-scaling. Whoa, that sounds very fancy. In other news, Linode also recently upgraded their block storage volumes with NVMe drives, which means you can get a huge speed upgrade at no extra cost. If Linode sounds good to you, use the link in my description below to sign up for a 60-day $100 free credit. Now interestingly, we actually got two boxes in the mail. I'm assuming that this little one is the e-waste peripheral box, and this is the hot rod optiplex box. So let's start off with this one. Maybe this is the optiplex, that would be pretty wild. Wow, this headset has all the features. We've got high resolution, protein cushion, dynamic speaker, and it's got strong wire. Holy crap, it is huge. Ooh, that is some nice protein cushion right there. This headset kind of looks like if Mattel built a Transformers inspired headset for like a Kellogg's cereal toy promotion. It is horrendously built plastic that just looks obscene. I cannot wait to try this headset out. <laughs> Ooh, and here is the rest of our e-waste peripherals. I do actually recognize that mouse. I think that's a budget mouse that you can buy on Amazon. Uh, I didn't know that you could get a keyboard with it as well. We get an RGB remote, which... I don't know if that's for the peripherals or the PC, we'll have to figure that out later. And then over here we have a little Wi-Fi USB dongle, which is pretty standard for this kind of system. They've really leaned into the 13 year old's idea of cool looking peripherals for this setup. It kind of makes it really obvious who this system's targeted at, which I guess says a lot about me considering how excited I am by it, but whatever. And then we have a keyboard, which is, is a keyboard. I know, another Optiplex, whatever, but as you can see, they've done some detailing on the front, and by detailing, I mean they've stuck a red sticker on it over here and here, but under this bit of foam, there is some RGB magic, uh, apparently, there should be, at least. Oh, oh, oh no, um. Oh no, oh, they didn't. Oh, it's just, it's gonna, oh, there we go. Woo, that was so close. I almost destroyed the handiwork, which I cannot wait to admire. Because this is one of those RGB mirror effect things that is gonna just triple the EPIN value of this system. Cannot wait to see what that looks like. And then around the back, we've got some standard Optiplex things. Although we can see that this is quite an old standard Optiplex by the lack of USB 3 and the inclusion of a Triassic period port. Who wants to guess what graphics card we have under there? <laughs> Having a look at the side, this is actually a pristine Optiplex, especially considering that it's from 1823. Whoa, that is a pristine Optiplex interior. It actually kind of makes me think that this is new old stock, like it's just been sitting in a box its entire life, because this is a very old Optiplex, and you can tell by the fact that most of this stuff is non-proprietary shapes. We've got an ATX power supply that uses a 24-pin and a 4-pin for the CPU. And I think the motherboard is even MATX, if I'm not mistaken. And on the other bright side, we do have dual-channel RAM in here. Hell yeah. Let's have a look at what kind of RAM that is. Oh, okay. It's DDR3, so the system's not going to be that old. 
That makes me think that maybe we've got like an i5-2400 in here. We'll, we'll see once we boot the system up. And then down here in terms of the graphics card, we have the legendary GT1030, which I actually think the CPU may have some trouble keeping up with it, but we'll see We'll see later when we have a look at the benchmarks. Uh, now, finally, I do want to look at how they actually implemented that infinity mirror because as you can see, there's not a whole lot of wiring going on here. They've actually done it very neatly. I think this is the wire for it that they've kind of routed around up through here. So whoever did this modification to the case really is a professional. Oh, and we also have a 256 gig SSD by Hajan, which apparently has 3D NAND flash in it. Nice. So with that, let's put it back together, fire it up, and see what this hot rod looks like in all its RGB glory. Oh, I just noticed this sweet mouse pad. If only it was available on some kind of online shop that offered free shipping. Oh wait, it is! Link in the description. I haven't been this excited to turn on an Optiplex pretty much ever, so let's, let's see what... No way. Have you ever seen that kind of sex appeal from a Dell Optiplex? The infinity mirror is cool and all that, but I don't think it's a very good infinity mirror because it kind of curves in like that. They're not straight lines, is that normal? We've even got some RGB on the front here. Now, before we evaluate the venereal bloatware situation on the system, let's just take a moment to admire the majesty. The Windows install situation on this PC is essentially perfect for a pre-built. There is no additional venereal disease on this system. Let's have a quick look at what CPU we're working with here. Um, oh, it is actually a 3470. That is a higher end CPU than I was expecting, considering, oh, I, I must be very confused and not know the insides of Optiplexes as well as I thought. And then finally, we have our GT1030. So with that, let's have a look at a bit of gaming performance with this system. As is tradition, we're starting off with GTA 5. This is running at 1080p normal settings, and I think we've got half V-Sync on. Let's have a quick look. Now we can unleash the full power of the GT1030. <laughs> it's actually jumped by less than I was expecting there. So what this performance means is that the GT1030 is officially less powerful than an Intel iGPU, which that's, that's kind of humiliating. That being said, the frame pacing is decent and it does, it, it's a reasonable gaming experience. Oh, as I said that, it crashes. Let me just do this. Oh. Um, that is definitely unusual. I don't know if it has anything to do with the fact that I'm running the game off an external SSD plugged in using USB 2. <laughs> that may definitely play a role there. Anyway, let's let's move on to a more demonic game. Okay, um, I think the CSGO gaming experience is closer to its iGPU brethren, although a 5300G still definitely gives you a better gaming experience than this. But it's, it's kind of usable. You know, there's not much input lag. It, it feels okay. So now I think we need to move over to a game that is very important for an Optiplex gaming PC scam uh, to, to run well. And that's, that's Fortnite. Is this Fortnite? What is, what is happening here? What is all this? Are these all game modes? Oh, is that solo? I'm way too much of a boomer to understand, to understand Fortnite menus. Okay, well here we're essentially running a 1080p with uh, everything on low except for epic draw distance. And while I wouldn't say that this is a good gaming experience, I've definitely seen Fortnite run way worse than this. <laughs> like way worse. So, it's not going to give you diphtheria, probably, but this is not nice. Like, if, you, if you're if you reasonable at Fortnite in terms of skill, this system's gonna really irritate you because it's it's stuttery and you're, you're gonna struggle. 
But if you're a filthy casual that just wants to play a little bit with your friends, I guess worse things have happened than this. Oh, I thought this was a kid's game. How can they have an item called guzzle juice in it? <laughs> Sounds so gross. Oh, we went out and they just got their guzzle juice all over me. It was really gross. Oh, yeah, guzzle that juice. Yeah, b Yeah, he didn't know I had guzzle juice on me. Otherwise, I know he wouldn't have messed with me. No, I didn't spend too much time talking about the gaming performance of the system because it's just a Optiplex gaming PC scam with a GT 1030 in there. Been there, done that. It's just one of those, but with tons of added sex appeal. Actually, on that note, it does seem to have MATX motherboard mounting in there, so I am thinking of doing a follow-up video where I put, like, a top-of-the-line gaming system in there. I think it would make for an amazing sleeper Optiplex build. Subscribe to the channel and comment down below letting me know if you want to see that. I think that should be a pretty good video. And then, before we finish off, there's just one more thing that I want to talk about, and it's that gaming headset. Because it is the most ridiculous bit of audio gear I have interacted with in a long time. And I think the easiest way to describe it is, it's a little bit like if you go to a gas station for lunch and you buy, I don't know, like a, like a sausage roll or the American equivalent of that would probably be a corn dog, just any hot meal from a gas station. And while you're powering this food down, you just can't help but think to yourself, this tastes a little bit food poisony, but I'm gonna finish it anyway because I, I paid money for it. And then five hours later, you get a powerful grumble in your stomach and you let out an immense fart. And when that smell hits you, it's just so overwhelmingly ridiculous, but you can't stop smelling it because you don't know when you're going to experience a smell like that again. You just have to, you just have to savor it so that you can remember it. And that's kind of what this headset is like. It's like a gas station pie fart gaming headset. The reason for this is because it has the most ridiculous bass presentation I have ever heard. It makes Beats by Dre bass sound like a class-leading exercise in restraint. I just couldn't stop listening to music with them. Uh, I just be like, this song has a good bass line in it. Whoa, that's so ridiculous. All I can hear is And then I listened to some Daft Punk and my head exploded. Like, it's, you kind of have to experience it. I'm, I'm going to stop talking about it now because I can probably go on about it for hours. But if you're interested in audio and you have some disposable income, they're like 30 bucks off of Amazon and, you know, it's Amazon, so if you don't like it, you know, you could send it back, which is maybe a bit of a dodgy suggestion, but still, I, I really think that it's worth an experience. The mouse and the keyboard were just middle-of-the-road e-waste gaming peripherals, they were okay, but that headset really is something special. And, uh, yeah, I think with that, it brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one, and until the next one, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.